Hello everyone, welcome to the Narc Survivor YouTube channel. Before I begin, please give this video a thumbs up down below. It helps the YouTube algorithm and gets this message out there. This is why gang stalkers are after you. Gang stalkers are people who may be following, watching and harassing you. It may include a vast network of people in your community. The more people that are involved, the more important you are likely to be. Gang stalkers are just groups of narcissists and they're flying monkeys. They're people who have been manipulated into harassing you for the narcissist's benefit. They tend to have an inflated sense of self-importance and a lack of empathy, as well as a need for excessive attention and admiration. They're very insecure, so they always feel the need to be in control, which is why they will manipulate as many people as they can to maintain the control that they are seeking. The goal of the gang stalkers is to make you feel vulnerable, helpless and scared. They may threaten you and try to isolate you. They may even track and monitor you in an attempt to intimidate you. They can be very manipulative and dangerous as they are seeking power and control over you. And there could be many reasons why you are being gang stalked, but it always comes back to one thing. There's really only one reason. And the reason is that you have caused a narcissistic injury, potentially on a grand scale, which means that you have wounded the narcissist and the gang stalker's egos. You have injured their pride and self-worth or they believe that their false image has been criticized, slighted or insulted, or that you have challenged their inflated sense of superiority, specialness or entitlement. Which is what has given rise to their intense reactions and narcissistic rage. And you may feel like they are trying to reject you, but what many targets of gang stalking don't realize is that it is the target who has already rejected the narcissist or their gang stalkers. You have unknowingly turned them down. And maybe you didn't mean it in that way, but that's how they took it. And once they get the idea in their heads, they run with it. And there's really no going back after that because they don't know how to let it go. You've bruised their egos. You've made them feel unimportant. So now all they're concerned about is get revenge. They're seeking to punish you because they believe that you have hurt them. If you have a disagreement with a narcissist or a gang stalker, that typically means that their entire system or group will turn against you. And that is when you will experience gang stalking, which is a group of people who are generally suffering from a cluster B personality disorder or mental illness, who no longer like or support you because they believe that you are different. Which should reveal to you that they believe they're all the same, whether or not that is actually the case. And even if it is just a delusional belief in their minds, it has to be what they're thinking. Because otherwise they would not single you out from the group. They would not belittle you or attack your reputation. And you may not have even realized that you rejected them you may not have said or did anything out of the ordinary, but your face says it all around you're around people. Your facial expressions reveal what you're thinking, even when you don't say anything. It shows them exactly how you feel. So they already knew that you disapproved of them. They knew that you felt you didn't belong to their group. And maybe you didn't approve of how they treat people. So they immediately viewed you as their opposition, as their enemy or adversary, even though you may never have intended it in that way. And it could have been something petty. 
It could have been something so insignificant. But we only have to look at football hooliganism to see that. Where people display aggressive behaviour during football events, which may seem mindless and pointless to other people, yet to them it makes perfect sense. But there is a psychology behind these football fans. When their team is doing well, they feel a sense of achievement. They experience hormonal surges and other physiological changes, which is similar to what the athletes experience on the field. And they may even experience an increase in status and a feeling of pride. While if they have identified a loss, they will experience negative emotions such as anger, humiliation and resentment. And they may even experience it as a threat to their social identity to where they may then engage in abusive and aggressive behaviour. And considering that this is something that gang stalkers rarely take a break from, the only possible explanation is that they are constantly experiencing a sense of loss. A sense that something they want is being taken away from them. And of course that something is you. Which is why they're coming after you. Because they have an inflexible system of ideas and ideals which they were expecting you to conform to. They have this mentality that you're either with them or against them. And once they believe you're against them, you're out of their group. Because they make decisions as a group, which typically results in unchallenged poor quality decision making. When all they really desire is for harmony and conformity in their group. But either they already know that's never going to be you, or maybe you've tried to conform. But once you've caused that narcissistic injury, it's already too late. After that, they're only going to become stalkers, which is why they will start smear campaigns and harass you on social media. Because from that point on, they're already viewing you as something temporary. They're not even thinking of a future with you in it. If they were, then they would probably think twice before doing it. So from that point on, it should already reveal to you their mindset. They already know how things are going to go. They're already planning to exclude you, to limit your ability and development, and to make it difficult for you to be involved with other people. Because they will try to get everyone to hate you just as much as they do. If you're finding this video helpful, you can give it a thumbs up down below to show your support. They may openly insult and degrade you. They may spread misleading information to promote their biased point of view. They may try to sabotage your progress. They may bully people who are close to you. And they may obstruct any associations that you're trying to make, which can be a very diff difficult thing to go through because it's bad enough when you're just dealing with one narcissist. That alone is enough to ruin a person's life. But you're dealing with a group of people who all believe that they are right and that they are superior to you, which they're using as an excuse to be negative, to criticize and belittle you and to shame and punish you because they think you're different. They think you're not the same as them. And that may be true. Maybe you don't think the way they do. So you're not conforming to ideas or practices in your behavior or views. You're not agreeing with them. You're not cooperating with their sequence of instructions, which they believe to be the correct and established way of doing things. Or maybe they're just showing an excessive interest in themselves and they don't approve of you not going along with it. But either way, they have given up on their sense of individuality. They have surrendered their qualities and character that would otherwise distinguish them from other people in their group. They have denied their separate existence, which is why it may seem as though there's nothing original or unique about them, because they all act the same in an effort to serve the group while expecting you to do the same thing because they're very insecure. They have very little confidence and they are uncertain about their own abilities or if other people really like them. While as their target, you are showing confidence in yourself and your abilities and qualities. 
you're showing certainty, which is a very attractive trait because they're not confident. It irritates them. It makes them angry, which they try to mask with an air of arrogance, entitlement and superiority. And by treating you in a condescending way, because they feel threatened. They feel that your presence might cause them to be less respected or less admired as a result of your distinguishing characteristics, which then results in paranoia, both in yourself and the gang stalkers, where they become suspicious and distrustful of you. But they disguise their insecurity by acting as though they're all seeing and all knowing. They try to play God, as though they have unlimited power and they can do anything they want, as though they're in total, con total control of you. Which is actually what just perpetuates the difficult and stressful experience for them, because then they can never have complete control over you, unless they tied you to a tree. But that's not something they're going to do, because then it wouldn't be a satisfying experience for them. They need you to have the ability to move around so that they're able to control your choices and decisions. Which may cause anxiety and distress for you because as a normal person, you're not going to feel comfortable in that type of environment. Only dysfunctional people thrive in dysfunctional environments. So for you, you may experience unhappiness and disappointment because it won't feel normal to you. It won't seem usual, typical or expected. And that's what they play on because they're anything but normal. And that is how they gain power over you because they keep you in a state of fear where you're always on edge, where you're highly alert to potential dangers or threats, which is exactly what they want because they need a lot of attention, which is why they will try to isolate you so that they can have all of your attention for themselves. But the more attention you give them, the more miserable they will feel. There is a reason why they target you in groups rather than it being one on one. And it's quite simply because they don't believe that they're enough on their own. They don't believe that they have enough power or strength to attack you in that type of setting. So they act as a group because they believe that by themselves they are insufficient and inadequate. They're lacking power, capacity and competence, which is why they don't tend to promote individuality or self-identity. And instead they find strength in numbers because they believe that it gives them more influence and power than one person, when in actuality they may, that may not always be the case. Because they may be acting against their core desires in an attempt to gain power, which is why despite all of their efforts, you may be able to overcome them. Because unknowingly to them, what they're putting out is what's keeping them in a weaker position. Yet in their mind, they think that it empowers them they think that it gives them importance and authority, which is what they want, because they're seeking to dominate you, to gain influence and control. But whenever someone does that, that is actually their Achilles heel. It's their weakness and vulnerable point. Because it affects their ability to preserve themselves, to where they become predators and they lack empathy unless they think there's something they can get out of it. But even then their kindness is fake. But you do need to be very cautious about criticizing their group because there's clearly a lot of insecurity there. So if you say something negative about their group, even though it may be honest and truthful, it may have an opposite and unintended effect and it may provoke an intense negative reaction from them because they feel the need to hold on to their group for their lives. They feel weak, powerless and inadequate on their own 
when in actuality the opposite is true because they're all connected. So if you trigger one member, you trigger the entire group, which means that you are the one with all of the power because you could just give one negative remark to a single person and yet it would affect however many people there are because they're highly reactive to you. They're under your influence, which in a way, it's almost like you're their God. You're this parental figure that they hate and resent, which is why even when they come after you, there's no point speaking about your different ideas or how incorrect and difficult they are. Because gang stalkers are very predictable. They lack logic and reason. So you have to accept that you can no longer be, be a part of their group because you don't agree with what they're doing. You don't accept how they treat people. Their behavior just doesn't resonate with you. So you can't allow yourself to be a part of it. Gang stalkers do not act alone. They have a leader or several leaders and they have sold their souls. They have disowned their individuality in exchange for some earthly favor. And they have chosen to take their cues from contemptuous individuals who have a need for superiority. So you should try to focus on better and more promising situations that are more favorable and beneficial with you. The gang stalkers may try to encourage and establish certain beliefs within you, but you can find satisfaction from knowing that your character is right. They may come after you. They may tell you that they don't agree with you. They don't like you and they don't want you to be a part of their group and you should approve of their decision by realizing that it is beneficial for you because what kind of person would want to be a part of their group? It's not going to be anyone that you would decide to, to associate yourself with as they're weak and inadequate so they find strength in numbers. They engage in criminal behaviors. They thrive in dysfunctional environments. They do things that disgust you. So even if you are seeking good company or positive reinforcement, you should know that you're not going to find anything like that in their group. So count yourself lucky. Realize that you have dodged a bullet, something that otherwise would have posed as a hindrance in your life. So reconnect with yourself and practice self-care. And when you're ready, you can find other people who are more kind, loving and patient. Thank you for watching. If you found this video helpful, please give it a thumbs up. Share your thoughts in the comment section. Hit the subscribe button to receive the notifications. If you would like to support the channel, you can donate at payable.me slash narcsurvivor. You can book a one-on-one -on -one with me on my website. It's narcsurvivor.co.uk. Thank you for watching and I'll talk to you soon.